Ned. Here I am on a ferry bound for Deception Island, one of the San Juan Islands off the coast of Washington State. George's friend, Katie Firestone, is expecting me. Katie's a marine biologist who's doing research into deep water parasitic growth. She also owns a whale watching boat and takes tours out practically every day. I should be excited. But for some reason, I feel on edge, like something's out of whack. Maybe it's because George and Beth arranged this little vacation for me, and sometimes their plans don't work out so well. Or maybe it's because we're about to dock at a place called Snake Horse Harbor. Kind of a creepy name for a town, don't you think? Or maybe it's because I haven't been on vacation for so long that I've forgotten how to relax. Anyway, we're here. It's not raining, but it's not sunny either. It's just kind of gray. Maybe that's why I feel so strange. Every year's Nancy. Katie? Hi, you must be Nancy. I'm Katie Firestone. Come on, I'll take you down to the boat. Great timing, huh? I just got back from getting some groceries. George could not have picked a better time to arrange for you to come out here. Just last week, this orca showed up in the channel. And now it... Oh my gosh, what happened? Someone tore the place apart. The engine's a mess. Parts are missing. Others are damaged. Why would somebody do this? Do you have any idea who did this? No. Look, you're on vacation. Just go relax. Or bike into town. Or, or take my kayak out. It's at the end of the dock. Just always wear your life jacket. And don't go past the channel markers. And if the fog starts coming in, head to shore fast. The fog we get around here is as thick as cotton. And never go out without a GPS. That's a global positioning system. Mine's somewhere around here. Anyway, your bunk's the empty one below. Why don't you go unpack? Ah, my trusty laptop. Good thing I recharged my batteries. Something. Want me to put them away? If you could put them back in the drawer for me, that would be awesome. Okay, what's the best way to get all these in here with no space left over? Complex morphological issues? Microscopic tracheid analysis? Microtome surfacing?
You know, Nancy, for what it's worth, I shot my mouth off pretty good at the town meeting last night. What do you mean? This orca, this killer whale, showed up in the channel about a week ago and has been hanging around here ever since all by itself. She was getting way too close to boats, so I called the National Marines Fisheries Service. They made some recordings and did some tests and are analyzing them. In the meantime, they ordered all boats to stay at least 300 feet away from her or risk paying a $1,000 fine. That's what the meeting last night was about. Some people don't like that idea? The people that fish for a living sure don't. They're steering clear of the whale by taking the long way around the island to get out to sea, which costs them time and fuel. Some people say she should be captured and towed out to sea. But the fishery service has the last word? They've asked me to monitor her physical condition while they study their data and decide what to do. But personally, I agree with the no-boat zone. I also think that if she's found to be sick, she should be shipped to a research facility for treatment, not return to her pod. I said as much last night, only much more strongly. Who's Andy Jason? Andy does whale watching tours too. If I had a dollar for every time he's come here trying to talk me into selling out to him, I wouldn't be fixing this engine. I'd be buying a new one. Do you want me to call the sheriff for you? Actually, I'd rather not get the sheriff involved. The insurance company would raise my rates, and I just can't afford that. Besides, I've got my very own private detective now. You. See you in a bit. Be careful out there. This note wasn't here before, was it? No. Whoever messed up my boat must have written it. Uh-oh. Katie's GPS doesn't look so hot. What's up? I'm afraid whoever tore up your boat also wrecked your GPS device. Oh no. It'd be a shame for you not to go kayaking. I know. Bike to the Hot Kettle Cafe and see if Holt Scotto will let you borrow a GPS from him. See you in a bit. Have fun. Hang on, I'll be right with you. Actually, I'm looking for someone named Holt Scotto. So what do you want? <laughs> I'm Holt Scotto. I'm Nancy Drew. I'm visiting Katie Firestone. Well, now, why would you want to do a thing like that? Call myself Nancy Drew or visit Katie Firestone. Well, you're not one of them save the whale and uh, heck with everybody else crusader types like she is, are you? I, I'm just here on vacation. Her true colors came out real clear last night. Us fishermen don't count. All that matters is rescuing that poor, precious orca out there. To heck with people trying to make a living. Of course, is the way she makes her living being hurt by that whale? Why, no. Her business is booming. Now, ain't that the oddest thing? Her boat was ransacked this morning. She ticked off a lot of people last night. That's what she gets for being so meddlesome. Anyway, welcome to Snake Horse Harbor, home of Cadborosaurus. That's how this place got its name, you know. Who's... Cadborosaurus. Well, that's the sea monster Native Americans used to see out in the channel ever so often. Called it the snake horse. Had the head of a horse and the body of a giant snake. People on Vancouver Island started calling it Cadborosaurus after it or one of its relatives was seen a couple of times in Cadbora Bay. They call it Caddy for short. Does it ever do anything? Back in the late 1800s, he took the rap for a lot of hoodoo around here. Fog would roll in at night, and men would just vanish. It was the snake horse, people would say. <laughs> Little did they know. Why do you think they vanished? Well, they'd been Shanghai. See, a bunch of establishments in town had secret panels built right into the walls. Guy would be having a drink one minute, and next minute he'd be clobbered over the head, whisked into a secret passageway, and taken out to a ship waiting in the harbor. He'd wake up on the high seas and discover that if he wanted to survive, he'd better do what the captain ordered. No matter what he was before, he was now a sailor. It was a cheap way for captains to get crews back then, and an easy way for some of the town's citizens to make money. Whoever trashed Katie's boat also ruined her GPS. Oh, now that's a shame. She seemed to think you'd let me borrow one of yours. I'll let you borrow one, sure. I got a spare right here in my duffel. You know what else I got in my duffel? Why am I getting the feeling I'm not going to like this? This is a little seamanship quiz I whipped up. 
I'm thinking about making people pass it before they're allowed to rent any kind of watercraft once I become harbor master. Here. The idea is to cut down on having to rescue people who got no business being out on the water in the first place. Trouble is, nobody's actually taken it yet. I need a guinea pig. You mean, if I take the quiz, you'll let me borrow the GPS? If you pass the quiz, the GPS is yours. You'll need that container for the last question. Did you say you were a fisherman? Fourth generation. I've fished every ocean for just about every fish you can make money fishing for. Lived here for the last 11 years. How often do you go fishing? Every day. The only reason I'm not out there right now is because I've been in and out of campaign meetings since 8 this morning. No offense, but you don't look like a politician. <laughs> Why, well, thank you, young lady. I'll take that as a compliment. I think it's high time people around here started doing what makes sense instead of doing what's politically correct all the time. Harbor Master we got now bends over backwards so far for the environmentalists, it's a wonder he can still walk upright. See you around. Yo-ho-ho. Ho.